Okay, let's um, let's just go ahead and take this up. We'll we'll call it a practice quiz, but really it's just a question, I guess, just like any other ones that I guess you do in class. Um, the trickiest part of this question is literally figuring out the height. That's you just got to use some. Uh, this is like a grade ten trig type question. About same length. All right. Does it tell you what the length of the string is? Three meters. Three meters. Three meters? Okay. The ball's height at position one. It's going to be with respect to. You can say that the lowest point in the system is h equals zero. Okay, so we're going to call, we draw a dotted line across here. That's the height that the object is uh, raised to vertically. It has no, it makes no difference that it's on an angle, it makes no difference that it's being pulled up, uh, you know, in a circular arc. It's just the vertical height that we care about. So, the trick to this question, I guess, if you have to use some problem solving skills, is to recognize that I'm just going to erase this three here. If you can solve for that side of the triangle, then the difference from x1 and the total height being 3 meters will give you the height of the uh, that the object is raised. And we do have enough information to solve for this. Okay, we've got a hypotenuse. And we know that this is 45 degrees. And so we have those two pieces of information combined with the fact that it's a right angle triangle. We can actually solve for x, which uh, will allow us to solve for the height by subtracting it from 3. Yeah, so if we do, um, from the way I have the angle labeled there in the top corner, it's going to be another cosine calculation, right? Because the x side that I've labeled uh, is adjacent to the um, angle. Excuse the interruption with all teachers who are scheduled for Remembrance Day Assembly 1. Please proceed to the cast. Alright, post 45. Equals x1 over 3. So then 3 cos 45 equals x1. <coughs> 2 2.12 meters. Going back to the diagram that I've got, 
the actual vertical height that we've given the pendulum by lifting it up at an angle of 45 degrees is, uh, is just 0 0.88 meters. So that's actually the hard part of the question. The rest is just a straightforward energy conversion. Which type of energy does the object have at position 1? Gravitational. <laughs> Gravitational potential energy. Fantastic. Um, let me guess. They didn't give us the mass of the pendulum? They did? Okay. We didn't actually need it. That's okay. Okay, so we're going to use this information now that there's no friction in the system. So all of that gravitational potential energy up at position 1 gets converted to kinetic energy at position 2. We are solving for velocity, right? Yeah. We're getting snooze. Kind of got lost along the way. Okay, so the velocity, if we rearrange this all in one step, we've got 2 times 17.2 uh, divided by 2 square root. So it's just the square root of 17.2. You could have canceled out the yeah. 2 times 1 half first. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. Okay, so square root. 17.2 gives us 4.1, 4.15 meters per second. Is conservative mean no friction? Conservative, all, yeah, it means that's a great way of thinking of it, no friction. Yeah. I mean, it, more formally, though, it means that the energy at any point in the system is the same. Okay, like the energy at the top, the 17.2 joules, was equal to the energy at the bottom. Any other questions? Now, let's say this was on a test and you knew how to approach the question. But let's say that first step tripped you up. Let's say that very first step is like, oh, I can't, I can't remember, I can't think of how to use the trig properly to figure out height. A good strategy on the test would say, well, that looks like about halfway. Maybe the height is 1.5 meters. So say then, write me a little note. Say I 
I don't know the exact height, but I'm going to assume it's 1.5 meters. And then you can do the rest of the question if you knew how to, you know, if you realize that it's EG to EK, then the rest of the question is pretty straightforward. There's no reason that just because you get stuck on that first thinking part of the question that you couldn't do the rest of it. Okay, it's okay to do, to say, well, I'm just going to assume that this value is such, and then I'll, I'll follow your steps through. As long as it's not, you know, crazy, like, I'm going to assume that it's 3,000 meters above the ground, it would kind of be a little bit wrong. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Okay. okay.